we've previously seen that two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. And then we can slightly generalize that idea to the idea of an orthogonal set where I have n vectors, and it's an orthogonal set if every possible pairing of those vectors is going to be zero as well. As in, for every i and every j, if I pick out the i vector and the j vector of my set, then that dot product is zero. So why do I like orthogonal sets? Let me suppose that I have a basis. But it's not just any old basis, it's an orthogonal basis. So it has both properties. It's an orthogonal set and it's a basis. Now, the property that it's a basis means, if I take any other vector, like how about just a generic vector x, and that I decide to take this vector x, I can write it as a linear combination in this basis. In other words, there exists some coefficients, which I will call a1 all the way down to a n, where I've taken this vector x and I've written it in this basis, all of these v vectors. Now, if we think about the process of how do I figure out the a1 down to the a n generally, well, we would take the v vectors, we would put them into a matrix, they'd be the columns of the matrix, and we'd solve some linear system that was this matrix with the columns of v times the coefficients of a is equal to this vector x. And we could solve that system by row reductions. But I want to note that it's a bit of an arduous process, that their matrix has a total of n squared different components, and your row operations are going to adjust most of those, and particularly as your matrices get large, it's a process we don't really want to do by hand, and it's also not all that computationally efficient either for the computer to do in very large instances. So I want a faster way to pick out the A1 and the AN, even though we have this old methodology that would work fine. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to try an experiment. I'm going to try taking, how about V sub I? So this is the ith of these vectors, and I'm going to take the dot product of it with this vector x. So we'll see why I'm, I'm doing this in a moment, but I know that the property of a dot product, it distributes over addition, so I can rewrite it like this. This is a1 times vi dotted with v1, and then I would have the same thing for v2 and so on, and normally I go all the way to vn here, but, but I'm actually going to do one of the intermediate ones. I'm going to look at the i step here, it has an ai, it's going to have a vi dotted with a vi, and then I would continue on to the i step, and the i, or the i plus one step, and the i plus two, and I would carry on all the way until I got to the nth step, where I would have the same vi, but dotted with vn. All right, now here's the key point. If I look at this expression, I have it that it is an orthogonal basis, which tells me that the vast majority of these vi dot v something else are going to be zero. So vi dot one, that is going to be zero unless i happen to be equal to one. vi dot n, that, that is going to be zero unless i happen to be equal to n. But, but this one here, that is the only one that survives and remains non-zero. And so I'm going to say that this is equal to just the ai and then vi dot vi. And if I want to rearrange this, I could say that my ai is going to be equal to vi dotted with x, all divided by vi dotted with vi, which is a different way of saying the length of vi squared, as the length is just going to be the square root of the dot product of the vector with itself. And so this is my final formula. Now notice what it's doing. It's saying that for any ai, I can immediately compute it as long as I can do two different dot products. And dot products are pretty quick and pretty easy to do. So I don't mind doing one dot product on the top. I don't mind doing one dot product on the bottom. And so I'm therefore able to figure out every one of these coefficients in my expansion easily without having to go and do any row operations.